Hello again, it's Dr. Bones here with Instructor Beat with our Multiplying Fractions playlist video number one. As always, we thank you for watching Instructor Beats and hope you will find this lesson educational. So our objective today, today I will multiply a whole number by a fraction using visual models. Even though we are discussing multiplying fractions, we must first go back to the basic understanding that repeated addition is, in fact, multiplication. So when you are repeatedly adding things, the shortcut for you to use is multiplication. So instead of doing 4 plus 4 plus 4, which, yes, I know is very easy, but instead of doing it with addition, we could rewrite this problem as three groups of 4, which would equal 12. And so in this case, when multiplication is repeated addition, this time sign is going to say the words groups of. Now there are different types of multiplication which we'll be getting into, but today we are going to focus on multiplication being repeated addition. So in fifth grade, we multiply fractions for three different reasons. The first one is the focus of our video today, and that is repeated addition. And just like we talked about in the last uh, slide, when you are saying three times four, really this time sign is saying groups of. You don't need to write this down, but it's just important for background knowledge if you want to be a fractionologist such as myself. And so we're going to focus on it being repeated addition, which again, the time sign is going to say the words groups of. So instead of reading it as three times four, you would read it as three groups of four. Very, very important distinction to carry with us as we dive into the world of multiplying fractions. So our smart dinosaur thought for today is... <laughs> Loosely translated, that means you can solve repeated addition fraction problems using visual models. So Dr. Bones is going to dive into, and I like to say the word dive a lot for some reason, but we're going to get into solving fraction multiplication problems using visual models today. Thank you, smart dinosaur, for that thought. Here we have the I do problem, and our equation is 2 times 2 6 equals our variable. So in this instant, because I am a paleontologist as well, we are going to use a dinosaur egg instead of a letter for our variable. So we want to know what number is inside that dinosaur egg just wanting to get out. So... Like we said, we're going to view multiplication today as repeated addition. So really what this say is saying is, is two groups of two six, right? And so when it's repeated addition, we use the words groups of as we read that times table. So let's do a little bit of paleontologist magic and dig up some visual models. Ah, there we go good bones of a number line in our fraction model. Two visual models we're going to be using is our fraction tape diagram or area model and also our number line. Now, I put them on top of each other so that you could see that our area model is really one whole just like our uh, number line is. And I know that my denominator is six, so I have split my number line into six equal pieces, which means I'm also going to split my area model into six equal pieces. Now, normally you would not have to draw both of these, but these are the two different tape, or these are the two different visual models that Dr. Bones will be using today that you will also be practicing with. As we read before, we want two groups of 2, 6. And so if I were doing this with my tape diagram, I would shade in my one group of 2, 6 here. And then I needed another group of 2, 6 here. And I can see very clearly that my egg is really going to be a 
four, six. So when I crack open my egg, I see that this variable is really going to be a four, six. And we know we're going to need to simplify that because we have gone through our adding and subtracting playlist, but we will leave that for one second because now I want to show you what it would look like on a number line. So first of all, just like my tape diagram, Dr. Bones has split our number line into six equal groups, and I wanted two groups of two six, so I'm going to skip Here's my one group by two six, and I'm going to skip count by another group of two six. And when I, of course, shade that in, I'm going to be at one, two, three, four, six as my answer. So both of these are going to give you the same answer, but it is important that you know how to use both of them as visual models to help you solve these types of questions. Now, as always, I want to simplify my answer. And so I'm going to divide for six using my identity property of division. And my big one I will use is two over two. And so when I get my simplified answer, I see that it was really a two thirds all along. <laughs> if you need help with the simplifying part, please feel free to go back and review our Simplifying Fractions lesson as seen on our fantastic YouTube page, InstructaBeats Official. Please subscribe. Let's take a look at one that we can do together. So here we have six times two fifths. Again, we are trying to figure out what dinosaur, what fraction is inside of that variable egg, right? Not the proverbial egg in the chicken and which came first, but the variable egg. This represents a number that we are trying to uncover using our paleontologist and fractionologist skills. So first of all, we're going to choose to read this multiplication problem as repeated addition, which means our time sign is going to be saying groups of. So really, I want to figure out if I have six groups of two fifths, what is my answer? I'm going to use my paleontologist skills to dig up a visual model for us now. And just as always, Dr. Geller and Dr. Bones do not disappoint. We dig up what we are looking for. And here we have found our number line and some area models to go with it. So just like before, I'm going to drag my area models over here and I'm going to make my fraction tape diagram using four holes just to put it above the number line to show that our area model and our number line are really doing the same thing. So I had six groups of two fifths. My denominator is five, which means my number line, each hole is broken into five pieces, which means each of my tape diagram and fraction models need to also be split into five equal pieces as best as I can. Dr. Bones is not perfect, but I imagine I can be close enough for our demonstration today. Now, Dr. Bones, make sure your fraction pieces are equal parts. Thank you for your reminder, Dr. Geller. I appreciate that, yes, fractions do need to be equal groups, so I did my best to split them into equal groups. And now I want to know six groups of two-fifths, so I'm going to shade in six groups of two-fifths. And again, if you're doing the tape diagram, you can kind of uh, count it off as you go to make sure you've shaded in six. So here I have three groups, four groups, five groups right here and six groups right there. Now I will shade in my six groups of two fifths and I can see when I did that I had two holes completely shaded in with a leftover of two fifths. So I have two and two fifths getting out of my cracked dinosaur egg. Another way I could write that would be as an improper fraction, and I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 fifths. So either one of those would work. And when I do this on my number line as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 
you can see I still come up with two and two fifths, which can be rewritten as 12 fifths as the in proper fraction. So this is the basics of using our visual model just to shade in. Of course, the shortcut is coming, but we always here at Instructabeats want to know not just what to do, but why it works. So again, today we're choosing to read these multiplication problems as repeated addition, which makes our time sign say groups of, and then we are shading in our visual models to show the understanding of what we are doing. Let's take a look here at this test prep question. So this might be a question that you might see from those tricky old people who make your test. And it's giving you the number line and it's saying, what equation does this represent? So obviously this is repeated addition, which means we want to read this time sign as saying the words groups of. Now that's gonna be very important that we read it this way to make sure that we have our numbers in the correct order. So I can see that each group is made up of two pieces and that my denominator is one, two, three. Three, make, three pieces make up each whole. So I'm finding groups of two thirds and how many groups do I have? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So here I had six groups of two thirds, which when I counted that gave me an exact answer of four, or you could write this, my denominator was three, as three, six, nine, 12 thirds. And then when you divide 12 divided by three, you would still get four holes. Now, it's important that you know this time sign says groups of, because some of you may have written two-thirds times six. Now, commutative property of multiplication tells me that I will still get my answer as four, and I, Dr. Bones, do not disagree with you there. However, the correct equation was six groups of two-thirds, not two-thirds groups of six. You would read that multiplication problem a different way, which you should tune into our next lesson to help you understand that. But it is important that you know how to write the equation correctly and read it correctly. So even though two thirds times six will still give you the same answer, that is not the correct equation shown by our visual model and our number line. So some of you are asking a very important question right now, Dr. Bones. What if it's a word problem, Dr. Bones? And that is a great question. So let's take a look at one word problem together before we are done with our lesson. Our word problem says there are six players on a basketball team. That's a small basketball team. They each ate two six of a Subway sandwich. What is the total amount of sandwich that they ate? We are going to continue to use our sides check word problem strategy. If you don't know it, please check out our Instructed Beat song on our word problem strategy. It is a fantastic song if Dr. Bones does not say. So my statement is going to say the total, so my statement is going to say the total amount of sandwich they ate is blank. When I go back into my word problems, I'm looking for anything about who the they are and anything obviously that they ate. So it says there are six players on a basketball team. They each, which I need to circle a thousand times. So each one of them ate two six of, we always underline the word of after a fraction, a Subway sandwich. What is the total amount of sandwich they ate. So I'm going to annotate that with an addition sign because I know that I'm bringing things together and Dr. Bones is trying to dig up the total amount. So I'm going to be drawing my tape diagram here and I know, woo, there we go, that there are going to each eat two six. So I'm going to split this into force here and I'm going to label this as one, zero, one, two, three, 
and 4. So this is 4 holes put together. I see my denominator is 6, which means each of these is going to be split up into 6 pieces. So each of my holes will be 6 because that was my denominator. So I split it into thirds and then in each third into half, which gives me 6 total pieces for each. Now luckily there will be a shortcut coming, so you don't have to do this for very long. But again, here at Instructor Beats, we want you to visualize not just what you're doing, but why you are doing it. And I know that there were six players in each of them, eight to six. So here would be player one, here is player two, here is player three, here is player four, here is player five, and here is player six. And when I go back and shade in all of those, I see that it has brought me to exactly two holes. So I can say that if each of them ate two six of a Subway sandwich, they ate two sandwiches. And that is the answer to my question. I hope this has been a lesson that helped you visualize what you're doing when you are multiplying whole numbers and fractions using repeated addition. Please stay tuned for our next few videos in our playlist that will explore the other reasons that we multiply. As you saw in your notes, there were three different reasons. Today we covered the first one. Our next two videos will cover number two and three and you will learn the shortcut for how to multiply whole numbers times fractions so you don't have to draw out these pesky tape diagrams for very much longer. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to Instructabeats. We invite you to check us out on Instagram at, at Instructabeats. Check out our webpage at Instructabeats.com. And as always, please check out our YouTube channel, Instructabeats Official, and subscribe. Dr. Bones and Instructabeats.